Hey guys and welcome back. In this video I will teach you how to create a beautiful and fully functioning search filter in React. So let's get started. First things first, we need to install React and for this I will be using Vt which is the most recommended way to get started with React. So let's open your browser and search for Vt plus React. Click the first link and here just scroll down to copy the command which is npm create wheat at the rate latest. Now just go to the folder where you want to create a new project. So I am inside a folder called react search filter. I will open command prompt here and I will paste the command that I have just copied. Now it is asking for the project name. So I will call it search filter without any space. And now it is asking for the framework. So let's choose react. And by the way you can select the options using your up and down arrow keys on your keyboard. And finally let's pick javascript for now. So react has been set up. Now if you found any issues at this point, make sure that you have node installed on your system. It is very easy, just go to the official documentation and proceed with the windows installation. And also make sure to install vs code in the similar way as this is the editor I am going to use in this video. So anyways let's continue. Now the only thing left is installing the dependencies. So for this let's navigate into the search filter by typing the command as cd search filter and here we can run the command as npm install to install the required dependencies. Now once the dependencies are installed, let's close the command prompt and open the project inside VS Code. Now in case if you are not familiar with Vite, so it is pretty similar to create react app with some minor changes in the project structure. However the code remains same. For example in Vite you have vite.config.js file and also here index.html is located in the root. So first of all let's run our newly created app to see if everything is okay. Let's open the terminal inside VS Code. The shortcut for that is control plus backticks. Now to run our project we have the command as npm run dev which you can find in scripts which is located in package.json file. So this is the default app that react provides. It has a nice counter and let's look at the speed. So as Vite uses native browser modules for bundling, hence you will get a solid speed in both production and development. Now before moving forward, I want to make some changes. Currently the project is running on port 5173 but I want to change it to port 3000. So for this, let's go to v.config.js file and here next to plugins, let's add a server key with an object value of port 3000. And now if I save, it will automatically transfer the port to 3000. So how cool is that? Now in order to create our own project, let's close the app first and let's remove everything inside the return of app.jsx file because this is the code that is responsible for the starter app that you have seen earlier. Now as we want to create our own project, so we don't need this code anymore. So I will simply add a div with the text as react search filter tutorial inside that. Also we don't need to import any CSS file because we will be using Tailwind CSS. So we will stay in this app.jsx file and do styling as well. Also we don't need this counter state anymore. Let's go inside app.css file and remove everything from here as well. And I will do the same with index.css file. Now first of all I want to set up and install Tailwind CSS. So for this, let's head over to Tailwind CSS docs and proceed with the steps. First of all we need to run this command to install Tailwind in our project. Next we need to run this command to initialize a Tailwind configuration file. After that we need to replace the content inside the Tailwind config with this one. Now this is just to tell which files will be using Tailwind CSS classes. Finally we also need to add these Tailwind directives inside the root CSS file which in our case is index.css file. Because as you can see our entire app is using this file as it is mentioned in main.jsx file which is considered as the starting point of any react application that is using Vite. 
So what these lines will do is that as soon as we run the project, these lines will generate all the classes for us and as index.css can be accessible to any component, hence we will be able to write Tailwind classes in any component and utilize this powerful CSS framework. Now I hope it makes sense. So now let's run our project once again. So as you can see we have a text appear and if I write some style using Tailwind CSS, for example let's make the text center using text center class and as you can see it also works. So it means that Tailwind CSS is working. So we are done with the basic setup and now let's focus on the actual implementation. First of all let's create a state variable to store the to do's as this will store array of objects. So I will initialize my state variable with an empty array. Now for the to do's I will be using a fake API which is from JSON placeholder and on their website you can find get route for to do's. Now if I open this so as you can see we are getting our to do's as an array of objects. Each to do holds a title, id and completed boolean. So we will be using these three in our project. So in our project let's use the use effect hook to fetch our to do's. I will put an empty array as the second argument to our use effect hook to make sure that it only runs a single time as the app loads. And inside the use effect hook I will create a function as fetch to do's. I will make it async and let's create a try and catch block. So in the catch block I will throw some error and in the try block let's write the logic to fetch our to do's. So let's write the fetch method and pass our API URL inside that. It will be using a wait because the fetch method always returns a promise and I will store the result inside the data variable. Now I also need to perform another step to turn the data from JSON to pure JavaScript object to make it easier to work with. And finally I will set the to-dos to our final result. Now I hope we will be getting our to-dos. So let's put a console.log to-dos and go to our browser, open console tab and check to see if we are getting the to-dos. So as you can see we are getting our to-dos as an array of objects. Next we need to create the UI and map over the to-dos. So let's create a div with 100% width and inside this we can create another div with a width of 80% and margin horizontal to auto. This will center the elements inside the div. So inside this I would like to create another div with 100% width and this is the div which will hold two things. The search bar and the table that you see here. Let's create a search bar. So I will create a div with display flex, justify center, item center. This will keep the search bar or the input element to center. So our input search bar will consist of attributes as type equal to text, placeholder equal to search to do's by title. The on change attribute should store the value and keep track of what user enters. So let's pass a function name to the on change attribute. I will call it handle search and let's create the definition of the function up here. For now let's keep it as it is and finally I would like to give my input some style. So for that let's give it an attribute of class name and let's set the width to 100%. I would also like to give it a poppins font. So anywhere in a react app if you would like to use a font. So here's how you can with Tailwind CSS. So first of all navigate to your browser and search for Google fonts. I would like to use poppins. So I will search for poppins in the search bar. Now select some styles. So I will go with light, medium, semi bold and bold fonts. Once you have selected the styles, just click on the icon at the top right corner and here select the text to copy in your HTML file. So let's go to your project and in the root you will find index.html. Just paste the text that you have just copied before the title. And that's it. Now you can use the fonts anywhere in your React application. But with Tailwind it becomes super dynamic. So let's open tailwind.config.js file and inside the extend object write font family key with an object value of primary array which should consist of poppins and sans serif. Now it means that if I write font primary anywhere inside my app it will get this poppins font family. And in any case if it is not available such as if the internet is gone then it will automatically apply sans serif as a font family. So now it is super dynamic 
If I want to change my font, I will simply come here and replace Poppins with something else and then it will be replaced in the entire application. I hope you got the point. Now let's proceed further. So after giving our search input font primary, let's also give it text MD which means medium not too large. Let's apply the semi bold style padding horizontal to 4, padding vertical of 3, text black, margin vertical of 4, border grey 700, background grey 100, shadow LG and an outline of none. So we have created our search bar with some basic styles and let's now go ahead and create the table next. For the table I would like to create another div and inside this div I will use the table tag with class name of width full which means width of 100%. Now a table holds t head and a t body. The t head in our case will be a single row with three columns. The columns includes id, title and status fields. Let's give the row some styles. So let's set the text to left using text left class of tailwind, the color of text to white and a background of gray 800. Finally let's give it font primary to apply pop-ins here as well. For the columns I would like to give each a padding horizontal of 4 and a padding vertical of 2. Now the table heading is also done. Next let's create the table body as well. So it should consist of 3 columns as we have 3 headings and each should come in a single row. So as we need to map through the data to get all the rows. So for now I will create a single row and then I will map over it to get all the remaining rows. So let's create a tr tag with 3 td tags inside. And the tr tag should include some styles like border t, background grey 100 and font primary. The first td is the id. It should have the styles as px4 and py2. The next td is the title. So it should have the styles as px4, py2, text lg, font semi bold and text grey to 600. Finally the third column should have px4 and py2 as styles. And this one holds the status. So now let's map over the to do's and make it dynamic. So before the tr let's write curly brackets because we are using javascript here. Let's write to do's dot map. We will get each to do in a to do variable and let's wrap this around our entire row. I will provide key as to do dot id. Now this is important to give each to do a unique key to separate it from the other to do in the list. I hope you got the point. Next I will replace the dummy id with to do dot id here as well just to display the to do's in order. Next I will also replace the dummy title with to do dot title. And finally the third column is of status. I will give it basic styling of px1, py2, rounded lg which basically gives it some border radius, font semi bold, text white, shadow md and text center. So now if to do dot completed is equal to equal to true, let's apply the style as background color of purple, otherwise if not then set the background to pink. So this is how you can give your element a dynamic style using backtick sign and curly brackets. And for the text, let's write if to do dot completed equal to equal to true, we will set it to completed, otherwise pending. Now as you can see the status column is updated and it looks a lot nicer and cleaner. Finally let's implement the search bar functionality. So for this first of all we need to create a new state variable. I will call it input search. It will be an empty string for now. Now in order to get what the user enters in the search bar let's come inside the handle search function. I will simply get event object as argument to this function and using this I will update the input search using set input search and set it to e.target.value. And with this now the input search variable will hold what the user enters in the input box. Next I will filter to do's based on this input search. So I will simply write to do's dot filter and for each to do I will write to do dot title dot to lowercase dot includes input search dot to lowercase. Which means that it will filter all the to do's out where the title holds any letter that this input search has which the user enters in the input box to search a to do. And with this now if I store the result in filter to do's variable and pass this instead of to do's down here, the search filter would start working. So this is a simple trick which you can use to implement search filter in react. 
and the two lower case function here are used to continue searching no matter if user searches with capital or small letters it will simply make it work so guys this was the step by step guide about implementing search filter functionality in react i hope you have learned something helpful from this video i have attached all the links including the source code in the description below at last i want to mention that if you are interested in learning how to implement pagination in react watch this video